Hi, thank you for checking out Mural, my low-cost open source wall plotter. In this video, we'll go through putting it together from start to finish, but first, a very brief overview of the project. A few years ago, I was toying with the idea of using a wall plotter and these washable markers to create temporary wall art. I didn't want to create one from scratch, and for a bit it looked like I had some choices. I could buy one, there's a commercial product called Scribit, and there are a few open source wall plotter projects I could join. But Scribit is 500 bucks, and none of the open source projects checked all the boxes for me, so I figured I'd just build my own. I wanted to make a wall plotter that's completely self-contained. The only thing you need to attach to your wall are two small nails or thumbtacks, and it should be able to draw large designs with high precision. I wanted to 3D print as many parts as possible and keep the cost under 100 bucks. A lot of the open source projects I was looking at use these ultra cheap stepper motors, and I already had these lying around, so I got to prototyping. And I got it working pretty well. We almost had this mural instead, but turns out these motors are pretty weak and they skip steps quite easily. And just like with 3D printers, once you skip a step, it stays with you for the remainder of the run. And just like with 3D printers, the solution is to use big boy stepper motors, NEMA 17s. This of course adds to the cost, but you can't argue with the results. And you can see how repeatable the movement is here, where each color was drawn in its own run. That took me two years to get to, but let's skip over that minute detail and get to the good stuff, the final product. We're gonna use a USB-C power delivery board to get 12 volts from a USB-C power supply and a buck converter to step that down to five volts. Then we have two stepper driver boards, a servo to move the pen up and down, an ESP32 microcontroller as the brains of the whole operation, and on top we got our Pancake NEMA 17 stepper motors. Not a ton of parts as you can see, and the assembly should go pretty smoothly, so let's get to it. First things first, go to the firmware flashing page, hook up your microcontroller to your computer, and flash the latest Mural firmware on it. Then plug it in, find the Mural Wi-Fi hotspot, connect to it with your phone, go through the captive portal, and connect it to your home Wi-Fi. Next, get your plastic parts printed out. I used eSun PETG on a Bamboo Lab Mini, and they turned out great. Grab your bottom piece and your power delivery module. On the back of the PD module, you can see different combinations for these switches here. We want 12 volts, so flip the first and the third switch on. Plug it into your power supply and verify you're getting 12 volts. If not, your power supply probably doesn't have the required voltage and you should get the recommended power supply. Now let's solder some headers onto it. The first two are pretty straightforward, but we need three headers each. So dab some extra solder on the screw terminal pads and add two more headers there. Now some of you might think that this is a bit janky, so let me tell you right now, it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Most importantly, it's functional and adds nothing to the bomb cost. Anyways, grab the board clamp and secure it to the bottom with two 8mm bolts. Next up, grab your motor driver boards, insert the motor drivers into them, and use 6mm bolts to secure them to the case. Then do the same for the microcontroller. Next we have the step-down converter. We'll be using it to convert input 12 volts, which we'll be using to power the motors, to 5 volts, which we'll use for the microcontroller, the motor driver logic, and the servo. First solder two single header pins to the input. Hook it up to the power delivery, plug it in, and measure the output voltage. You will probably need to rotate the potentiometer counterclockwise, that's the blue part with a small screw on top, until the voltage starts dropping. Get it down to around 5.2 volts. And now for the output pins, and this is where more jank comes in. Remember how I said that we'll power the microcontroller, the motor logic, and the servo? That's four outputs. So we're going to make a header pin bus bar. Just keep telling yourself that this is functional and does not inflate the bomb cost, and you'll get through it just fine. Cut yourself two four pin headers and solder the first pin to the output with the pins pointing outward. Grab a piece of tinned wire and solder it across all the pins. The final product should look something like this. Grab two 6mm screws and secure the step down converter to the case. Now let's wire everything for power. Connect ground to either of the ground terminals and voltage to the 9 volt terminals. Connect two of the 5 volt pins to the 5 volt terminals, these will power the driver logic, while 12 volts will drive the stepper motor coils. 
connect the 12 volt line to the input of the step down converter. Now that the motor driver power is all hooked up, make sure you don't plug in the power supply until the motors are connected to the drivers. I haven't found a definitive answer on this, but a few of the boards I tested early ended up releasing smoke when they were powered without load. Maybe there were faulty boards though, but better be safe on this and wait to plug in the motors before powering everything on. Next up, grab the motor carrier pieces and use 12mm bolts to secure the idler to the motor carrier. The goal here is to have the idler be able to spin freely, but still be held down by the bolt without wobbling. Grab one of the stepper motors and attach the pulley to it, leaving about a millimeter between the bottom of the pulley and the top of the motor. Fit the motor on the carrier and make sure the idler is positioned around the middle of the pulley. Grab 25mm bolts and loosely secure the motor to the carrier. Put a piece of belt into the carrier and make sure it moves smoothly in the channel. Now tighten the bolts and make sure the belt is still moving freely. And repeat the steps for the other motor. Going back to the case, grab your servo and remove the female headers from its pins. We'll take individual plastic pin casings from the jumper wire and put them onto the servo pins. A really thin screwdriver or an X-Acto knife will do the trick. Gently lift the plastic tabs until the casing can be removed and then put them onto the servo leads. Hook up the red wire to 5 volts, brown to ground, and yellow to the D2 pin of the microcontroller. Now you can also wire in the V-in and ground pins from the microcontroller to the 5 volts of the step-down converter. We need to home our servo, but our motors aren't hooked up yet. So let's unplug the 12 volt wires, then power on the board, access mural from your browser, click on the gear icon, and click park servo. You should be able to hear it as it moves to its zero position. We're not going to be using any of the servo horns though, but we'll press fit the pen driver onto the servo shaft with the driver body perpendicular to the servo, as you can see here. Use the short bolt from the servo kit to secure the driver. Use a 12mm bolt to attach the driver to the pen. You don't want to tighten the bolt at all here. The pen should move freely as much as the case and the driver allow it. Use 8mm bolts to secure the servo to the bottom piece. If you've treated yourself to a set of heat inserts, and I highly recommend you do, grab one of them and drive it into the pen. Now hook up the step and direction pins from the motor driver boards to the microcontroller. Left step to pin 13, left direction to 12, then skip a pin and connect the right step to 27 and right direction to 26. Make sure the wires aren't getting in the way, take your motors and secure them to the case with 6mm bolts. Depending on which cables you got, you might have to switch the pins to match the long wires that came with the motors. Here you can see the two cables, and the long ones pin don't match the short ones, so it will rewire the short cable. Grab a thin flathead screwdriver or an X-Acto knife and slide it under the tab to remove each wire. Here's what my short cables look like when they're matching the long cables. Use these cables to connect the stepper motors to the motor drivers. Now the moment of truth. Plug in the power supply and you should see the pen move up once Mural has finished booting up. We need to adjust the current limit on the motor drivers. Get your multimeter out and measure the reference voltage between the adjustment screw and the ground pin. When I shot this video, I was still using a 20 watt power supply and had the current limit of about 0.6 amps going to the motors. After that, I decided to bump up the current to 0.8 amps and use a 30 watt power supply. So set the reference voltage to around 1.1 volts instead of 0.85 volts you're seeing here. Now grab the cover, tuck in the wires, and use 8mm bolts to secure it to the case. Add two 6mm homing bolts to each side and plug in the power. Access Mural in your browser, click on the gear icon and make both motors spin forward. Feed the ends of the belt into the motor. You probably want to shorten your belt to be around 7 to 8 meters, depending on the size of the drawings you intend to make. Put the hangers on the end of the belts, and if you find them to be loose, cut a small piece off the belt, and the frayed end will make the belt sit tighter in the hanger. Unplug the power, put the hangers on the homing bolts, and gently pull the belts until they are taut on the hangers. Now bang in two nails or thumbtacks at the top of your wall, 
near the ceiling and parallel to the ground and measure the distance between them in millimeters. Get an extension cord positioned so the power cable hangs down in the middle between the hangers and plug in your mural. Type in the measured distance and select the SVG file you'd like to draw. You can adjust the size and position of the design and on the next page you can choose the infill density. Once you're happy with the preview, retract each belt until the motor starts skipping. This is similar to your 3D printer homing before a print. After homing, Mural will extend the belts to its origin position. Once it finishes extending the belts, hang it up on the thumbtacks and make sure you don't pull the belts through the motors or you'll have to start over. Once Mural is hanging on the wall, insert a pen until you feel it touch the wall, back it out just a little bit and secure it with a bolt. Double check to make sure the pen is no longer touching the wall in this position and then adjust the pen position so it once again touches the wall. I usually adjust it until I see Mural get pushed off the wall and do one more for good measure. If everything looks good, click begin drawing and watch Mural go to work. You might have noticed in the trailer video that the drawings come out a bit distorted around the edges. There is a function in the code that converts a given x and y coordinate into belt lengths. I worked on that function until it produced good enough results and then moved on to the rest of the code. Currently, Mural is very precise, but not accurate. If you ask it to move around the wall and then come back to its original point, it can do that very well. But if you ask it to draw a large square, let's say one meter per side, you'll see that it will come out distorted. The correct solution is probably both geometrical and physics based. So if you know how to implement this algorithm, please reach out. Once Mural is both precise and accurate, it should be able to draw designs that can span the length of the entire wall by drawing designs in parts. While we're talking about kinematics, Mural currently runs at constant speed. This can cause some minor drawing inaccuracies when Mural has to change direction quickly. If I enable acceleration in the movement code, Mural would both get better at drawing things that require rapid change of direction and would be faster at drawing things that require only gradual change of direction. There's the CNC firmware called Gerbil that should have some code that does velocity planning according to acceleration parameters. So if you've worked with it before and would like to help, please let me know. Multicolor is a pretty low hanging fruit if you think about it. You just draw each color separately. For best result though, I should offset neighboring shapes of different colors so I don't end up drawing over the same lines and mix the colors. But that shouldn't be all that tricky. And the stretch goal is to use AI to convert input raster image to something that Mural can render in multicolor, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Well, that should do it for now. Please let me know about your experience with Mural, either here or on GitHub. I'd love to see what people end up drawing with Mural, and I've created a GitHub issue thread for you to post your results.